What's going on YouTube? Dark Room Mofo here with my uh, tin plate gadget deck profile. So I've been testing this deck a lot and I will probably be playing it at YCS New Jersey. I'm still undecided between this and Dark Worlds, but I I really, really like this deck and I think it has a great matchup against lots of decks. It's a consistent deck and it just has a lot of outs. Um, tin plate with the release of tin plate is amazing. Um, the ability to go first turn dweller against mermails and just do so many other stuff is really, really nice. And, uh, I really like the deck. Um, I picked up gadgets. Uh, I, I showed you guys my gadget build when Tin Plate came out. And Elijah Gersten gave me this deck list. Uh, I changed it up a little bit. Uh, so Same with the side deck. But uh, I really, really like it. So I'm going to show you guys it. And if you guys have any comments or questions, make sure to comment down below. Also, like this video. Please like this video. It helps me out so much. I've said that before, guys. Please make sure to like my videos. And um, tell me what you guys think I should play. Um, I want to make the smart choice. I would love to top this event. I really want to do well at this event. So I'm uh, playing this deck so I can hopefully uh, get a top with it. Or if you guys think I should play Dark Worlds and I feel comfortable with the deck and I think it's a good meta call, then I'll play that as well. But yeah, uh, three. That. Three of these guys. And three greens. The, um, the goldfish, as I said, is amazing. Whether it's a first turn dweller against water, whether it's a first turn gigan against everything, the advantage is just so nice. Then of course you play the nines because you want to have the consistency. You really, really do. Uh, and they don't, my deck's 41 cards, it doesn't really intervene. Um, like drawing a bunch of gadgets isn't bad, especially with um, a goldfish in hand, or a double summon in hand. For the other monsters I play, one gear frame and two fortress. The deck more or less re revolves around the tin plates and the gear gigant. Gaining advantage little by little, uh, wasting your opponent's resources with your traps and uh, poking in that little damage one by one. But um, these cards are kind of just for like that backup mid to late game. Um, I need to make that push or I need to get over something. Uh, whenever I have this card in my hand or I search it off the gear frame, I always hold it until I really, really need to play it. I don't really drop it recklessly or early game because I want to save it for um, the later plays in case they have outs to uh, my gigants or my goldfish plays. That's 15 monsters. Onto the spells. Monsterborn, Darkhold, Heavy Storm, pretty self-explanatory. Triple MST, pretty self-explanatory, but um, it's a really good card. I like it at three. I like it. Uh, resolving your uh, gadgets are very crucial. Um, making sure those Fiendish Chains don't touch your gadgets. Making making sure the uh, your um, the warning doesn't get hit or the warning doesn't hit your gadget or the judgment, etc. And then I also play uh, two Forbidden Lance. This card is really amazing. Um, Protecting your gadgets, protecting your gear protecting your fortress, etc., etc. It's just really, really good. Next up we have double summons, two of them. I don't like three because you don't really use this card too much first turn. It's kind of like, okay, I don't have a goldfish, but I need to make a play, which is really nice. This card's phenomenal, don't get me wrong, but three is just too much. Um, I don't really need it at three because most of the times I'm not really wanting to use this card early game. I'm wanting to use it when I need to use it. And with having it at three, I'm going to have it more than I actually want to use it. But two's a perfect number. Then next up, one duality and one pot of avarice. Uh, I don't need two because I'm already searching so much as it is. And the pot of avarice is pot of avarice. After I waste all my gadgets, I can go through them again, which is amazing. Under the traps, two torrentials, two bottomless, two deep prison, two mirror force. Um, pretty standard in most trap heavy decks. Um, I also play triple Fiendish Chain. Um, I've come to love this card. I was playing two, but uh, three is fantastic. It really, really is. I absolutely love this card. Just stopping your opponent's monster effects is so important in this game. Uh, I would play Veilers, but I really, really like Phoenix Chain. The fact that it stops the attack as well is phenomenal. Next up, we have the Warning and the Judgment, and the Ultimate Offering. All of these are pretty explanatory. If I, if I have this card and it resolves, and they don't have an out to it, I will win the game, um, no doubt. Ultimate Offering is an amazing card. Onto the side deck. Triple Maxi and double trag. Um, I want to make sure that they don't get their plays off. I want to stop them in their tracks. And if they just decide to push, I'll drop a big fat trag on them, which is really, really nice. Uh, trag is an amazing card. Like I said, I gotta speed this video up, guys. My camera's gonna die. Double Dyna, triple Diefy. Um, good cards. I, w I will be playing macros instead of that. 
Triple Ravelry, Evil Swarms, Water, etc. Good, good card. I like it a lot. Double Dust. Um, then on to the uh, extra deck. Triple Gigant, I feel like it's necessary. Double Dweller, necessary. Double Maystroke, very necessary. Utopia, Ray, Cowboy, Diamond Dyer, Roach, Gemini Pearl, Photon Butterfly, and Shockmaster. Um, either this is probably going to come out for a uh, black ship. Guys, I hope you all enjoyed my video. Please like it, as I said in the beginning of the video. Um, comment down below what you guys think I should play. I hope you guys all enjoyed my profile. Dark Room Level out. Peace, guys.